nothing is impossible to them that believe. There must be certain principles that causes God to come to my aid. to the Lord. Let us pray. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we give you the highest praise, for you are worthy to be lifted up, Jehovah God. We worship and adore you. We magnify your precious name. You are the God of all creation. Everything that we see and do not see, you are the God of all creation. Father, out of all the creation, there are many things that have not been discovered yet, and we thank you for that. You are the great God the God of all life, we give you praise, we give you thanks. Lord, be glorified, be exalted today, be exalted, be exalted, Father, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, hallowed be your name. Fathers, we come together today in this broadcast, in this service. We are praying for your grace to go through this thing. Lord, we are declaring that your kingdom is with us because we are saved by your power and by the blood of the Lamb. Lord, we give you thanks because you are God who changes not. You can never change. What you wear is what you are. Who you wear is who you are even today. Lord, you don't even grow old. What you wear is how you are. We give you thanks. We give you glory and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, be glorified today. Receive the glory, receive the honor, and receive the majesty. In Jesus' mighty name, hallowed be your name. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Welcome. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Felicity. Oh, my God. You are number one today. Felicity. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor Mary Mulenga. Oh, number two. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And everyone else that is joining us. We want to welcome you to this broadcast. I am broadcasting from the nation of South Africa. Um, those of you that are in Europe and uh, in the Americas, most of the times you don't understand the geography of Africa. I am in the very southern part of Africa, the country that is right at the tip, bottom end of Africa. That's where I'm broadcasting from, and I'm in the capital city of the nation of South Africa uh, in, uh, 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 in, in Pretoria. That's where I am, and that's where our ministry's headquarters are based. Uh, though we are everywhere else, we operate from Pretoria, South Africa. That's where we are. And so thank you for joining me today. I just felt it's important for you to know exactly where we are uh, broadcasting from and where the airwaves are coming out from. And uh, I'm in the area called Eastland. Every town has its own areas and uh, parts of the city. And I'm in the uh, part of the city called Eastland. Uh, in the, it, it's more on the eastern, rather, yes, as eastern part of uh, Pretoria. And uh, that's where I am, eastern side of the city center of Pretoria, which is now the city of Tswane. We give God all the praise because God, according to Acts chapter 17, verse 26, he has apportioned areas and territories and time for every one of us. And I am apportioned this area. That's where I am. That's where I operate from. 
and I believe I have friends from all over the world. God is a good God. He has given us territories, lands, and portions, and areas from which we operate, and we thank God. And uh, we need to be proud of who we are and where we are. We need to be proud of it. And uh, if something is not going well, let's change it. Let's have it changed. Let's transform it. You know, wherever God has sent you to be uh, stationed, you know, begin to be involved in the economy of that area. You know, in the spiritual economy of that area. In the spiritual life of the people in the area. Begin to be involved. Don't just be quiet. Begin to be involved. Let there be an influence coming out of you in the area where you are. You know, sometimes when I go into, my, into the shops nearby here, I'm surprised when people say, hello, pastor. And I, I, I realize, yeah, I have a little bit of influence in my own area. He says, you go into the world and preach the gospel. He tells them, beginning with uh, Jerusalem and Saramariah and all the areas, you know, it's a ripple effect. We are here. This is where our stone is, and we have to ripple into many other parts of the world and many other parts of the city. And be, please, uh, don't ignore your city and don't despise the city in which God has placed you. Because God is a marvelous God. He knows where to take you. He would have taken me anywhere else. Some of the friends I was with in school, they are settled in the U.S. Some are settled in, in the nation of Zambia. And uh, some are settled in Botswana. You know, you can imagine, and I'm here settled in Pretoria. And uh, so God is the one who knows uh, and, and apportions the territories and boundaries and places and, and time for us. So I want to urge you, when you are in that territory, uh, pray for that territory. Pray for your area of operation. You know, that's your headquarters, and then you can go anywhere else to go and preach. I've had people that wanted me to go and settle in other places of the world, and when you check in the spirit, it doesn't resonate, it doesn't work. You know, you want to just go visit them and come back. Uh, that's, that's one of the things that I know God has done, and yet we have many other people that have gone to those areas because God sent them there. Please go where God allows you to go and become an influence. Thank you. Good to see you, uh, uh, Mama Dali Raseloma. Good to see you online today. May God richly bless you. Greetings to the girls and uh, the, the young man there also together with your husband, Advocate uh, Raseloma. And uh, wow, good to see you. Tamio Namugaligo Di. May God bless you, Muruti, um, the woman of God. We appreciate the anointing of God in your life. It is well with you. Greetings to uh, uh, your husband, Obavali uh, Godi Justice. We appreciate you, and it's good to be a team uh, for us to fight this war together. We, we cannot war this war alone. We need God. We need God. We need God, and we need one another in the war against the forces of darkness and hell. Ladies and gentlemen, we just want to thank God. We've been praying against this COVID-19. You know, for two years we've been in war and praying and fighting against it. And we want to thank God. Out here in South Africa, uh, schools are back in full force. Cabinet, you know, decided that yes, you know, schools must go back into full force. And uh, the funny part of it is that they even told the children that no more social distancing. They can sit anywhere they want. Isn't that God? Hallelujah. Uh, because we've been praying that life must begin to be normal. I know there are many people, some on the platform that have been coming on the platform. When I mentioned that we are going to go back to normal and better, you know, some will say there will never be a normal. There will never be a better. But here we go. You know, uh, yesterday, is it yesterday, we only had about uh, 70 deaths. I know that is a lot, but it cannot be compared to the thousands that we were having in the days past. And we want to appreciate God for his goodness. Some other countries, by the way, have even removed your masks and your all these things. Uh, they've removed them. And South Africa also has relaxed a lot of things. Quarantine. Started with 14 years, if I'm not mistaken. Was it 21 days or 14 days? You know, not years, but days. And, uh, and uh, now they've brought it back to seven days. And uh, that if you, are, if you have no symptoms, but you are found positive, you don't have to isolate. Uh, it's going to work. It's going to, we, we continue to fight in the spirit. 
We continue to pray. Just like some countries are now making decisions to remove everything else. And this thing of uh, a, 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 a passport, COVID passport, and, you know, and all that kind of thing. You know, we are destroying the powers of the devil in the name of Jesus. We are killing everything that does not belong to the human race. We are destroying it by the authority of the cross on which Jesus died. That man did not die in vain. He died that we may live. Hallelujah. He was, he was beaten. They, they striped him. His flesh was pulled out of him so that we can be healed. And so I'm praying for those of us that are on the platform and those to hear me later, that if you are sick in your body, we call for healing because by the stripes of Jesus, you are and you were healed in Jesus' mighty name. It is well with your children. It is well with your children's children. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Good to see you, Brother Verissimo Bravo de Rosa, together with my wife, Pastor Dorothy Musepa. Good to see you. Good to see you, uh, uh, Madam. Good to see everybody that is on the platform today. And uh, we just began by encouraging ourselves uh, uh, to like where we are, wherever God has placed us. Even if you were not born in that area, but God has sent you there, you know, you are like an Abraham. Abraham. He was sent to a land which was not his motherland, and yet he succeeded. And I prophesy and proclaim and declare that wherever you are, you know, wealth will find you. You know, riches will be your portion in the name of Jesus. You know, don't worry about what people say about your status or your nationality. Just worry about what God has said about you. That is what will keep you strong in the mighty name of Jesus. Brother Madube, we are praying for your mother. You know, give us a report on what is happening with her. Uh, we are praying for your mother because on Sunday we know you had to rush to go and, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, see your mother who was uh, 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 very ill. We are praying for your mother, uh, Brother Madube uh, Lichata. We are praying Jehovah God is on the throne. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, let me uh, continue from where I ended, and I guarantee you I'm not going to finish it today uh, because the subject is very, very important. It's a subject that talks about not folding our arms and, and just seeing life passing by. You know, uh, 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 people have said words that like, like, uh, like time is money. Uh, that's why you need to know that wasting of time means losing money and losing a good life because you need to know that God has given you time in which you must build yourself. God has given us natural resources. God has given us raw materials to build ourselves. When you are born again by the Spirit of God, you are not a strong Christian yet. You are a novice, you are a baby Christian, but the raw materials are there for you to grow. The Bible is there for you to grow. Prayer is there for you to grow. Fellowship is there for you to grow. So God gives us the raw materials and it's us to use them for our growth and for our settlement. Even when it comes to this issue of poverty, I'm dealing with that on Sundays. I'll be finishing it, I think, this Sunday coming. But I'm, I'm dealing with poverty, how we can fight that spirit of poverty. You can refer to some of our, our broadcasts and you will see that, you know. Even when it comes to the issues of poverty, you know, where you were born, I declare that, where you are born is not your problem. You, it's not you, you know, it's about your parents. But where you will die becomes your problem because God is giving you a lifespan. Amen. God is giving you a lifespan from birth to death. There must be activity. There must be things that has to happen. You know, we are not going to live on the face of the earth forever. You know, people that we thought cannot die at that time died. And so we don't know when our day will come, but we need to work hard whilst we have our breath and whilst we can see and whilst we have our strength. We need to work hard in order to change the circumstances of our livelihood. 
We need to, we need to work very hard with our hands. It, 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 is, it is him that says he gives us the power to create wealth. He gives us that authority to create wealth. And so I want us, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, I want us to know that we cannot sit down and just fold our arms. And last week I dared to say that it was witchcraft that was sent in the church. You know, sometimes by, our, by the founders who told us to just sit down and wait in faith. You know, and I don't know how that would work. And we just followed because, you know, they pumped it into us that we just sit down and wait in faith. Especially us that are pastors. Laziness was planted into our systems where we cannot even work because we are servants of God. Every day I'm waiting upon God. I'm waiting upon God. The more you waited upon God, the more poor you became. What type of waiting upon God is that? You know, and uh, I think we misunderstood a lot of things. But now we are reading the scriptures ourselves. Listen, my fellow servants of God, we are reading the Bible ourselves. And we see that many portions of the Bible, I can even dare to say 40% of the Bible, talks about your livelihood, your living well, your wealth, your money, and all that kind of thing. From Jesus, he talks about the sower. That's, that's, uh, that's about finances. He talked about everything that, that pertains to life and livelihood. And so we need to do something about this. And that is why I captured the scripture last uh, Thursday uh, about the four lepers. The four lepers. And we said uh, the reason why we brought out the lepers is because we wanted a worst case scenario. We wanted a person that cannot do it. And yet he is the one that did it. The four lepers were people that were thrown out of the village. They were not needed inside town because leprosy was contagious. Leprosy is a terrible disease. It eats up your skin. And so those people were thrown out of town. When I arrived here in the city of Pretoria, on the very western side of Pretoria, before it was built the way it is, there was a center. It was a hospital for lepers. You know, uh, when I went there, they were there. The lepers were there. We visited when we were doing some ministry. And, and my goodness, you don't want to have a relative that is attacked by leprosy. So this was a, a, a terrible disease because it eats up your limbs, it eats up your lips, it eats up everything that it can eat up, it eats it up. What a terrible disease leprosy is. And these four lepers, it means they were hopeless guys. They were hopeless. You know, because look at this, they are sick and yet they are uh, 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 ostracized. They are sent out of the city of, of Samaria. And so they are by the gate because they used to perhaps just go beg for food and, and all that kind of thing. But this time they are seated by the gate. And when they were sitting by the gate, news was all over the city that the city was uh, 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 besieged by the, by, by the Syrians. And, and, that, and that the Syrians had locked up everything. Nothing went in and nothing went out of the city. And there was such poverty that people started to eat their children. Can you imagine that? To a point where one day the king received a report that, 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 that this one, we agreed that today we will eat my child and tomorrow we will eat her child. But now she has hidden her child. And the king tore his clothes and said, what is this? What is happening here? And, and, uh, and, and uh, it was a very bad situation. It was a terrible. And then the king said some words and said, listen, how am I going to help you? You know, where am I going to get help from? You know, if God does not help you, how can I help you? You know, so what we are saying, ladies and gentlemen, that there are situations that you need to trust in God and no one else. I have reached that stage where I know that ain't no man can help me in my situation. I need only God to help me. If you can reach that stage where you are not dependent on man and depend on God, because when man comes in, then it's God who sent them. You know, to help you and to be part of your life and, and all that. So what are we saying here? These guys, the four lepers, 
second kings chapter number uh, uh, seven starting from verse number three the four lepers they decide to have a meeting let's call it a conference of lepers and they they decided okay uh, 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 leper number one begins to say listen guys are we going to sit down and just fold our arms listen if we go into the city we die there's nothing there if we go out of the city well let's try to attempt something because if we go to the enemy if they kill us they kill us anyway that's where we are heading anyway death but we need to do something about it and and if they spare us then they spare us and you see god loves faith all right that is why hebrews picks it up in 11 verse 6 he says for without faith it's impossible to please god god saw faith in those guys that were chased away what about you who still has a house still has bread still has life don't you think god is going to hear you god heard them you know they said to one another if we sit here we die and so they said then they, then he said so what do you want us to do and the other leper says well let's go to the enemy camp that's faith that's you know they dared and they and they began to stand up and they began to go to the enemy camp and and we know the story ladies and gentlemen that when they were going and when they arrived at the camp to their surprise they were walking remember these are sick people after their lepers conference they went to the camp i don't know how far they walked and then when they arrived there everything was quiet everything was quiet remember sometimes we are afraid of what we haven't tried did you hear what i said we are afraid of what we have not attempted can you imagine that these guys arrive by the campsite and my god there is nobody in the camp and they say what is this and they they these guys were daring and i, I i'm i'm putting it across to us that we need to be daring christians enough is enough we need to be daring these guys were so daring and they said okay well, uh, uh, leper number three try to open that tent let's see leper number three says no problem if i die i die what if the enemies were hiding with swords and spears inside the tent because because they wanted to make sure that anyone who opens the tent is speared to death leper number three opens the tent number three says there's nobody here number four try the other uh, tent goes to the other tent i know i'm being dramatic but i want you to catch the story you know number four opens another tent it's empty number two opens the tent it's empty number one opens the tent it's empty and there's food in there there's water in there there's everything in there and the the syrians had everything you can think about in terms of eating and, and drinking and they uh, they ate and they ate and conference uh, director leper number one says hey come back here you guys another conference and they sat down in the in conference number two and they said this is good news and yet what we are doing is not good we are holding on to this news this is time to go back to the village and tell them that 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 there's food this is time to break the news that there's plenty for samaria and they did exactly that and man uh, 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 just like the prophet prophesied that there will be food and that there will be uh, food will be so cheap in the in the area of samaria and one of the the people even laughed at that and uh, the prophet was so annoyed and said you laugh you are not even going to see you will see it but you're not going to eat of it you know and that happened and and ladies and gentlemen we know that the news that came was that there was food and the the samaritan the samaritan people had the food that they needed uh, uh, um, and and, uh, and and there was peace again in the area now what happened is what is amazing and this is what faith does because the faith of the four lepers when they stood up to go to the enemy's camp guess what you know god is an amazing god 
He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. He says, you are mine and mine alone. And I want you to understand that if your father and your mother has forsaken you, according to Psalm 10, 27, if they have forsaken you, he says, the Lord will pick you up. The lepers were forsaken from the city, but the Lord picked them up. I speak today that those of you that are forsaken, maybe forsaken by parents, maybe by church, they have forsaken you. The Lord will pick you up. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. The Lord will pick you up. And, and, and as they were walking towards the camp, you know the story. And now the enemies there, the Syrians began to hear, you know, noises of horses. Can you imagine these are four uh, sick people. But this, the enemy starts to hear horsemen. And, 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 and armies and, and, and uh, soldiers, foot soldiers coming towards them. And my God, they began to run. And the kind of running was such that they could not take anything. All the spare clothes, spare boots, spare everything. If they had to leave them there. But that was God's plan. If God decides, no man can do anything about it. When God opens, no man can shut. And when God shuts, no man can open. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. So they, they, the enemy ran and went away. And the Samaritans, they had everything that they needed for their livelihood. Look at what God did because of the faith of four sick people. What are you suffering from? Some of you have all the energy. You know, right now you're wasting a lot of energy. That's one of the discussions in my home that many times we have wasted a lot of energy. Sometimes even the church makes us to waste time, you know, by calling you to petty things like, like fighting, quarreling among themselves. Then they want you to go solve the problem, you know, as though they were not adults to solve it themselves. Oh, that is time wasting. You know, we have bigger demons to fight, not those little ones which you can handle for yourself. Like this one man of God said, you know, when, when he heard that uh, the, the, the witches were going to gather in his city, you know, and the, 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 the people interviewed him and said, uh, but what, which God is going to be able to stop this because it's already done, it's already established. And he says, this one doesn't need God, it needs me. Can you imagine the faith? This is, does it, that God, God wasting his time with such a trivial uh, uh, matter? This one is me, I'm stopping this meeting. And for sure, that meeting was stopped. It never took place in his, in his town. That is faith. That is faith which we can learn from. You know, a faith is the substance of things hoped for. Hallelujah. And, and, uh, and so we are saying, ladies and gentlemen, that these men, because of faith, God did something there. Now, let me, I, I will give you maybe just one because my time is already uh, uh, up here. Uh, um, listen to this very carefully. Listen, you know, what happened with these guys? What, what are they showing us? What are they teaching us? Number one, they had initiative. Did you hear that? The lepers had initiative. They said to themselves, why sit we here until we die? All right? A person who is just sitting has no initiative. I pray for initiative in our lives as children of God. That we should initiate something. Everything we do, the camera's pointing at me right now. Somebody had initiative. You know, the microphones that I'm speaking through right now, somebody has initiative. You know, I'm seeing most of you on my gadget here. I'm seeing, I'm seeing Kamensita Beaver here. I'm seeing Felicity Penyane. I'm seeing uh, uh, Pastor Ligodi here. You know, what, what does that mean? Somebody had initiative. You can have initiative. The lepers had initiative. Let us have initiative to do something about it. Today in your prayer time, don't just pray, God, give me, give me, give me. You must pray, God, give me initiative. That I may create something that the world will use. Hallelujah. Initiative. So they had initiative. You cannot just sit there until you die. No. Hallelujah. Every miracle needs God and needs you. If there has to be a miracle at Christian Faith Center, God is needed, number one. You are needed, number two. You and God equals a miracle. Hallelujah. So, so, ladies and gentlemen, these guys had initiative. 
God's formula for every miracle is God plus man equals a miracle. Hallelujah. There's going to be a miracle in your life as, as long as you have initiative and put it in the hands of God. Put it in the hands of Jehovah God and pray over it. There's going to be a miracle that people have never seen before in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We need to have initiative. Next week, I'm going to look at, you know, number two. I have three of them. I can bring you 11, but I have three. Next week, I'm going to look at the second thing that they had. They demonstrated a spirit. Listen, these are three things in one. They demonstrated a spirit of risk taking. You know, that's, that's lacking in our lives, risk taking. They demonstrated a spirit of adventure. You know, some of the places I go to, I say, Ish, here where I am, if I pass away, how are they going to know where am I? <laughs> because I'm in, I'm in all kinds of places. But I love adventure. I love adventure. You know, and, and uh, these uh, 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 lepers, these sick people, they demonstrated risk-taking, they demonstrated adventure, and for sure, they demonstrated faith. We're going to look at that in a bit of depth next week. Uh, on Thursday, please come along and invite others to this broadcast because it's a blessing for many people. This is Bishop Sami Musepa out here in Pretoria, South Africa, saying shalom, shalom. I will see you bright and early on Thursday, 18 hours South African time or Central African time cut. We are going to be able to uh, meet again. The uh, uh, information is on the board for those of you that are in the greater Pretoria area. Uh, Johannesburg, uh, uh, Broncospread, Rustenburg, you're free to join us for service every Sunday. And uh, the account numbers are rolling on the screen. You are able to support the program we are resuming after this uh, COVID-19. We are resuming our feeding programs, clothing programs. And so feel free to uh, contribute and donate generously to these projects. May God bless you. Father, we are declaring you as God. We are praying in the name of Jesus, binding every yoke of bondage, every power of the enemy. We bind it in our lives, in our family. Lord, help us to have initiative. Help us to be your children that can never fail in everything we touch our hands to do. I speak healing upon anybody that is sick today by the power of God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the saints of God will say... Amen. God bless you. Shalom. I'll see you again next week.